Good evening. I'm glad everybody was able to come out tonight. I hope you all enjoyed the nice weather we had today. And, you know, that song right there, that was just a, a tremendous blessing in the music tonight. Uh, if you got your Bibles with you tonight, I'd like to ask you to turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, and tonight's sermon is called, Reaching the Loss No Matter the Cost. You know, I read a story about an evangelist named Leighton Ford. He was speaking at an open-air crusade in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The next very night, Billy Graham was supposed to speak. But Billy Graham had arrived a day early, and he came to the evangelistic meeting incognito, and he sat on the grass at the, at the rear of the crowd. Billy Graham was wearing a hat and dark sunglasses, so no one recognized who he was. Directly in front of Dr. Graham sat, a, sat an elderly gentleman who, who seemed to be listening intently to the sermon that Dr. Ford preached. And when Dr. Ford in, invited people to come forward as an open sign of commitment, Billy Graham decided to do a little personal evangelism. He tapped the man on the shoulder in front of him and asked, Would you like to, to accept Christ? I, I'll be glad to walk down with you if you want to. Well, the old man, he, he kind of looked up and down, and thought it over for a moment, then he said, Nah, I think I'll just wait till the big gun comes tomorrow night. <laughs> now, Billy and Dr. Ford, they, they had a lot of good chuckles over that. And, and it is kind of a funny story, but, but unfortunately, it, it underlines that in the minds of most people, evangelism's left up to the big guns. But folks, the Bible teaches that we are all ambassadors to Christ. We are all to proclaim the good news. And we are to do that no matter what the cost or what it takes to reach the lost. So if you have your Bibles tonight and you are over there in Mark chapter 2, I'm going to start reading in verse 1. I am reading from the New King James Version. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, He said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in His Spirit that they had reasoned thus within themselves, He said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately He rose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified. And God saying, We never saw anything like this. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank and praise Your name and and Lord, we're just so glad to be in your house tonight. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's here. And Lord, I just ask that you pour your Spirit down upon this place and, and you pour your Spirit down upon these people. And Lord, I ask that you give me wisdom and understanding to proclaim your Word. And Lord, let it fall on fertile ground. Lord, be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now folks, let's, let's look at the setting here and imagine this. Imagine Capernaum. It's a sleepy little fishing town. But Jesus had made this village his headquarters. This is a normal little town. It, it could be right here on Grove Ridge. And, and inside this house, people are they're jammed inside to see him. Every doorway is filled. Every window full of faces peering inside, seeing if they can catch a glimpse of the Messiah. Jesus is teaching. And then there's a noise. They hear a cracking sound in the roof. The sand begins to kind of filter down from the roof and, and bits of wood break off and fall on the floor. 
people start to look up and they, they see the ceiling, a crack starting to emerge. And, and it gets bigger and bigger. And, and finally, it suddenly it enlarges and, and a pallet comes down from this hole. And, and down through it, the whole roof, right down to the feet of Jesus, comes on this pallet a man who's paralyzed. Four friends wanted this man to see Jesus and they were willing to even tear the roof off of a house to get him there. And there's some lessons here for us to learn in the modern day, in the modern church, in reaching the lost at any cost. And the first thing I can see is that we are to bring all people to Jesus Christ. You know, these people could have, have left this paralyzed man to fend for himself. They could have said that it was, it was God's job to deal with them and, and, and save them. It's the big gun's job to deal with them. It, it's their position. They could have ignored him as a worthless cripple. Just as many today are ignoring people all around us who have been crippled by their sins. Some say, he's just an alcoholic. There ain't no help in him. It's just this is wrong. With, there's no help in him. He's on drugs, or, or you know, he, he's out fornicating. There ain't no help in that guy. He, he's, he's helpless. So was this paralyzed man. He was helpless, but God sent those there to help him. Some even think that they don't have to reach lost because that's what they're part of a cooperative program for. A lot of church denominations that, that have an association, they think, well, that's what our association does. They reach the lost. Folks, I counted the churches on my way down here this morning. And just as my brief count of, of ones that I could physically lay my eyes on, in my 25-minute trip, it was 10 churches. It is no one's responsibility at any association to come down and evangelize and reach the lost in our area. Folks, it is our responsibility. Now, folks, it's good to be a part of an association because together we can reach people that, that we would never come in contact with in other parts of the world. But, folks, it's our responsibility to reach the people in our own back doors. And those that aren't getting reached, those that, that are still paralyzed in their sins that are sitting there, that's an indictment against us that there's ten churches that I could see in that short trip. Every two minutes you're passing a church. But yet we have people that have not heard the gospel. People that have, have, have not been witnessed to. But folks, some people say, well, that's, that's what we pay the preacher for. But folks, it's everyone's job. Every single Christian alive that doesn't go out and witness, that doesn't go out and share the good news, is either giving false pretense or they're committing high treason against their God. Because folks, we're going to have to learn that, that it's so nice that when people come into our church and they get saved here. And, and I'm thankful for God when that happens. And, and it happens quite often. People come to our doors and they hear the gospel. It's preached every week. And they come and they hear the good news. And they come and they dedicate their lives. And they become transformed. They become a Christian. They lead a new life. But folks, the, the, the thing about it is, is most of the time it doesn't happen in the church house. Most of the time when people get saved, it happens outside of our doors. That's why we have to go to them. In Acts chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, if you want to look at it, in Acts chapter 3 it demonstrates this to us, that, that we have to go outside of our doors to reach them. We can't become locked in our stained glass windows and make them a prison in here and fortify ourselves and lock out the world. In Acts chapter 3, beginning of verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms for those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said... Look at us. So he gave him his attention. Expecting to receive something from them, then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered with the temple with them. Walking, leaping, and praising God. 
And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who was set begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Notice folks that it wasn't in the temple. It wasn't in the church that this man got saved. He got saved outside of the church and then they brought him inside. Folks, that's what we have to do. We have to go out and we have to reach people. Peter said, look at us. Peter said, look at us. Folks, when we go out into the world, we are to be a living example of the gospel. Your actions will speak that you are a Christian. When you get saved, you will see a change in your life. That's why the people, they said they came over here and they they walked, there was this wonder and they were filled with amazement that this man had been saved because they remembered him. They remembered he was the one that was, he was there begging for alms and he was lame every day. And maybe there's a person out here that's, maybe they're on drugs, maybe they're on alcohol, maybe they they have a mouth like a sewer, but when they get saved, the people that they were around, they're going to notice a change in their life. They're going to say, man, what happened to you? What happened to you? There's something different. Folks, sinners aren't able always to come to the church. I hope they do, but the fact is that they're paralyzed just like this man. He wasn't able to get inside the doors. I thank God when they do, but sometimes they can't. Satan has them blinded. And it's our job to go to them. They have to be brought, they have to be taught, just like this paralyzed man in Mark, if they don't have what it takes unless we bring them. This man was paralyzed from the womb. Just as each one of us are born into this world, we're born into sin and our sins paralyze us until we become redeemed by Jesus Christ and have a new life. But folks, the second thing is we're to bring all people by all means to Jesus Christ. You see, these four friends took a very unusual approach. They tore a roof off to get a man to Jesus. As the church, we're the body of Christ today. We have to learn to adapt and do whatever we can to get people to Jesus. I heard somebody rightfully say one time, the body of the church today has no longer become the body of Christ, we've become the mouth of Christ. We have to learn.